Deja Vu Summit. I have Nurse Andy with me today. And you guys, I'm going to have to learn right along with you because Nurse Andy is opening my eyes to how our genetics impact our goals. And those include our weight loss goals. So um, definitely listen in today and uh, learn right along with me. Nurse Andy, thank you for joining me. Ah, thank you so much, Lisa. I'm so excited to be part of your group in the summit and share just some of my joy. I love genetics because for me, it's been this magical roadmap to many different ailments. And yet all roads lead to us as an individual and our wellness or lack of wellness. And one of the first things that I think about is I like to, in working with people, you know, I, I saw a lot of folks that tried a lot of different things like we were talking and it wasn't working. They couldn't figure out, you know, you'd just focus on just detox or you would focus on just inflammation or just on your gut. And they would work so hard and yet not be quite getting the results that they wanted or needed for themselves or their households. Cause mostly I worked with families and when genetics, you know, we didn't have it when I was first working. And so as it started becoming more and more evident, I was looking at these patterns that we can see and it ties, you know, genes are made up of proteins and they're blueprints that tell our body how to make enzymes, how to make tissues and how to run processes. And so if we're thinking about things in the weight world of, you know, first off, I, I go to why are people either at their optimal weight or not at their optimal weight? And all of those things can be tied back in with their genetics. So one of the big things I see with people is inflammation. And, you know, inflammation is the fire inside of our body. And yet we know there's highly inflammatory foods. And so if you are having those foods over and over and over, that creates a certain amount of stress. But if you have genes for specific types of inflammation that are not functioning at full capacity, that little bit of inflammatory food can have an exponential effect on the body. And with that, we can also reverse it. So a lot of times, if I know that a person has three inflammatory genes, then we're going to say we're going to be a little bit more critical with we're going to skip some of the things and, and we get into real food makes all the difference. And so if we can have the hydration and we can have the specific, you know, omega-3, those essential fatty acids, that's going to help quash that down. But we can also play with things like, can we get quercetin from our foods? Can we get anti-inflammatory nutrients from herbs, from different kinds of mixtures? And it's really fun to play in weaving those together to support that gene makeup of folks. So, you know, I have to tell you that until I started talking with you and I'm approaching this all with an open mind to learn, right? I've always thought that we, we use that as an excuse, right? Oh, you know, my genes, my genes. And I've always said, this is a self-healing organism that when we remove the interference, it knows how to heal itself. And so I always wanted people to focus more on the lifestyle changes and to figure out even through an elimination protocol, right? I could determine that like grains, probably if I do your testing, I'll see I have those inflammatory genes and I don't metabolize carbohydrates well. Um, but I was able to figure that out through elimination protocol and removing those. But what you're talking about really is a toolbox and it's giving us that look under the covers of why maybe I don't feel good when I eat carbohydrates. I do love them they don't love me. <laughs> well, or why do you maybe need the little extra support? Because it's always interesting in a family how there's always the one child that can have everything and the other child that's sensitive to many more things. And even though it's the same set of parents, it's a different makeup. And 
one plus one doesn't always equal two. It, sometimes it you can have, and that's why I love looking at patterns within genes. So if we know we've got inflammation, or maybe we don't have it, but we have to think about, well, what about like our microbiome? Because we know that this is these little bugs are going to help break down our foods into those molecules that we can actually use in our body effectively to rebuild ourselves, to make our neurotransmitters, to create our hormones. And so a lot of times I like to look at, well, you know, if we know there's certain genes that are specifically going to make it so we can't make B vitamins, well, we know that's going to drastically affect our microbiome, which is going to affect our ability to detox, but also our moods, which we know both, you know, if we think about detoxification and weight loss in particular, if you have toxins, the body has to protect you. It has to create more fat to store those toxins so that the brain and the spinal cord are protected because those are, you know, very, they're mostly made of fats, lipids that are, you know, can easily be damaged. And so we have to think about, well, what do I need to eat? And this is where it's so fun because we can make beautiful different types of meals that are very supportive for say our methylation pathway that are going to give us all those nutrients and cofactors that are going to help us get rid of the toxins so that our body can function at its optimal ability. Well, I'm fascinated by this um, because I love to have data and tools for sure. Um, and it's not something that I've ever explored even doing for myself. Um, I've done everything probably the hard way with, <laughs> with an elimination protocol. Um, but what you're talking about is getting under the covers so that we can see someone's genetic makeup so that we can help determine that diet or those lifestyle changes that we need to make. Definitely. And and it's kind of that part of like with elimination, you know, so we, we take things out and yet we also know a lot of people are like, well, just let's do cruciferous and let's jump in and let's use our beautiful broccoli families and, and how we weave that in. And a lot of the, you know, people don't realize that if we're using this pattern, it's like a wheel and there's spokes to the wheel and they all affect each other. And that's how our genes play. And so if we know that we need certain types of, I call them biohacks and food is my favorite epigenetic biohack ever. And we can look at, you know, thinking on, okay, my methylation cycle doesn't work. So I'm going to need extra B vitamins in my nutritional foods. So what are foods that are going to give me high amounts of B6 or magnesium or the different types of sulfur compounds that are going to help me do this detox pathway of methylation to be able to get harmful things out of my body. But it doesn't have to be sitting in a clinic getting an IV drip. It's many times putting those things together and creating like I love a cilantro pesto to help move things out, out and around. And then also really looking at if I know my I have a genetic ability or lack of ability to feed my microbiome, and I have to stop and think, well, what does my microbiome need? I need to have very, I need a wide variety of nutrients, but I also need certain types of fibers and I need certain types of butyrates, you know, so I could look at what types of vegetables are going to be easier to have a fiber that's going to feed my microbiome. What kind of ways can I create pickles or fermented foods to help make my biome more diverse. And then I know that I like to eat certain foods sometimes that are not good for my microbiome. So no. if genetically, <laughs> if genetically I'm already at a disadvantage, then it doesn't mean I could never have those foods, but it lets me know, wow, wait a second. 
you are going to have a much worse effect than someone who doesn't have this genetic makeup if you choose to indulge too regularly in those foods. So it's 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 not that it's saying never do anything because I don't think that's a way of living, but it is like knowledge is power. And that's how I see genetics is it shows me where my strengths are and it shows me where my weaknesses are, but they're only weaknesses in the fact that I have to take little extra steps to support them because the things that I like to look, I don't want to look at things that I can't do something about. That makes me sad and frustrated. <laughs> so I want to focus on things that are called actionable genes and actionable genes means there's scientific data that shows me when I do X, Y, or Z, whether it's an activity, but I really like to focus on the food because most everybody I know, I don't know any breatharians. So everybody's eating every day. And it's a beautiful opportunity to take that. Mm, you know, some people see it as a task. I find it wonderful. I find cooking very meditative. It's wonderful to just reset my mind as I'm pulling. The colors are so beautiful. And being able to turn that into a loving meditation that's also going to give me this nutrient that's going to help me feel better on all these other levels. Because when my microbiome gets happy, it makes 80% of my neurotransmitters. And those neuro, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, this is why I teach cooking classes so that I can reinstill or offer the joy of cooking to the next generation. Oh, for sure. And I mean, and I, I was blessed to be able to learn it with my great grandmother, my great aunt, you know, we had a huge farm and we would, I love to actually grow food and then harvest food and all the different ways of cooking and saving it. And, you know, tying that back in with how we are just, you know, the love of it, the meditation of it is, I think such a wonderful gift for our youth. And I'm so happy that you're doing that. I'm going to have to have my daughter check it out because it's, I think most of us really find it soothing and helpful. And so our moods, we were talking about, if we know that 80% of our neurotransmitters, those are the communication molecules are made in our gut, that's going to have a huge effect on our motivation. But there's also other genes that affect our cravings, which I was really surprised to find out about. You know, it's like some people are genetically designed to want to, they don't feel as satisfied when they eat. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I think we can feel um, like we just don't have the willpower or we're just making bad choices because that's what we learned. And that is true. We have to work on those levels, but sometimes there's this underlying level that's pushing some of that. And I think that when we know that and we're conscious of it, we can make much better choices about how we want to support it. Because with some of these genes, you know, it just simply means you're going to do a little bit better with a little bit higher protein or fat ratio than carbohydrate ratio. So it's just that shifting so that you still end up feeling satisfied but you're making better choices on how to get there. So you mentioned epigenetics and um, I think of Dr. Bruce Lipton. I mm -hmm. remember seeing him live, you know, 10 or 15 years ago and I've read all his books and how we can change our gene expression. Exactly. I love Dr. Lipton. He is one of my favorites and it's true. You know, if we, there's there's a certain amount of what I like to do is that I think most of us, if we could just get into a good mood and focus in a certain, use our mind, there's mental ways of definitely focusing and changing our epigenetics. There are, you know, community we've seen in the blue zones that one of the biggest things is that we have a happy, um, full community life that we we as humans are meant to be interactive. And I think, unfortunately, we've gotten so isolated and especially in the last few years. And, you know, and part of that is because that releases hormones in our body. 
And that whole force within our system, our brains, our brains can't tell the difference between what we imagine and what's actually happening. You know, that's why I think where virtual reality and some of these things are so, you know, popular because it's the same exact set of hormones being released in our body that are going to make this happen. And that's why I always tell people genes are just a blueprint. They are not your destiny. And a lot of folks are afraid to test for genes because they think it means it's going to be a set thing that always has to happen. And it's not. That's where we are truly in such control. We can do it with exercise, breathing, hydration, food, but food is always yeah. one of those huge ones that every gene I ever talk about, I talk about ways to use nutrients from foods and herbs to be able to reset that. I look at them as glitches. It's just a glitch. And if we can bypass the glitch, we can optimize, we can make its function still happen. And that's kind of the exciting part of being able to you know, see where in the roadmap am I likely to have dips and problems and how can I get around those? Yeah. Well, I love that. And I, I love the fact that it's not a life sentence. It's not like, here's your genes and you're stuck with it. <laughs> you're using it as a tool to help someone navigate what they need to change or optimize what they need to modify. But understanding epigenetics, epigenetics is we can change our gene expression. So it gives us an area maybe to focus on to optimize our health through other methods as well, right? Belief, meditation, prayer, whatever that takes for somebody, which I believe we're a holistic being. So we need to start with a good foundation, which is real food, because our cells need real food, <laughs> and and then work on raising our frequency and our consciousness but you're really giving us a tool in order to figure out what is our starting point and why do i have this problem or that problem why does it seem like my husband can eat anything and i just have to look at it and i i'm bloated <laughs> well exactly and you know and and I, I just look at it all as a way to create power through knowledge because it is then unlocks the freedom of choice and that there's so many ways. And a lot of times, you know, I've worked with amazing physicians throughout the years, the decades. And a lot of times I was shocked when people would be like, oh, you have this ailment, but there's nothing we can do. And it's like, there's always something, there's no ailment that there's not something you can do. And food is such a critical part of that. And, you know, I, one of the things that I often am amazed at with folks is just how our body breaks things into fuel. And, you know, do we have the type of makeup that makes us a little bit more oxidative, which means we rust a little bit more than say someone who doesn't have that gene makeup. And it doesn't mean that, oh, you're just going to have heart disease and you're going to have Alzheimer's and you're going to have all these different problems. It means, no, I really have to pay attention to what kind of quality lipids do I want to put in my body? And I have to make sure if I'm using those nut oils, they can't be rancid. And I need to have the right ratios of, you know, the right types of fishes and the right types of eggs and different kinds of components. So to me, it's always just another great, like sitting down at a jigsaw puzzle. And it's like, oh, wait, I've got the outer edge here of my genetics mapped in, but it's going to give me an idea of where this piece goes and how that piece fits in. And can I be a little bit more lax sometimes? Or do I have to be like, whoa, wait, you have two, each parent gave you this mutation, this gene function. You know, sometimes we think, oh, it doesn't function. You know, sometimes it doesn't function at all, or sometimes it's at 70%. And so you have to be a little bit more committed to working with that. And it's just a way of knowing. And also in a lot of what I like to do is say, well, you know, we know this, 
is what your blueprint looks like. And yet, are you having these kind of symptoms, which means it's becoming a problem because that function hasn't happened. And here's some tests that you can also think about if you need to dive deeper. You can talk deeper with your healthcare authority if you need to on those different levels. And yet, you know, there's also a lot of wonderful things like, you know, who knew dancing is good for your heart and it actually, you know, can help to create a better way of how your body is managing that oxidative process. So there's a lot of ways. It's not just one way. And so there's always a way that you can find tools that can help you to really, I just call it biohacking. You know, it's like, how can I optimize what was given to me so that I can live the most productive, healthy lifestyle possible? And knowing that I'm in control of this, it's not just happening to me. Because I think that when we know that as an individual, we can do so much more to just live our fullest life. And, and that's what we all want for ourselves, our families, our friends, our society, for each other. Because the, I just feel so blessed to be able to share this and watch the people around me you know, blossom with feeling able to have the energy to run around. You know, I'm a grandmother of three and I I'm, I need to have plenty of energy to keep up with everybody and keep up with everything that's going on. And I want to live to be a centurion, but I want to be help. I want to be hiking and having fun. I don't want to just get an extra five to seven years because I worked hard throughout you know, this life, not time. Oh my gosh. I'm so with you. I can't believe you're a grandma already. You don't look good. I, yep. my, my <laughs> daughter just got married. So, you know, probably won't be long. My kids are 25 and 27 now. So, and that's what I'm preparing myself for is truly to have the optimal quality of life it's no longer just quality of life. Like I want the optimal <laughs> quality of life so that I can spend the rest of my life helping my kids and my grandkids and enjoying them. And, you know, it probably took losing my health to have that level of appreciation. So at, you know, 36, I was pretty down and out, um, type two diabetes, fibromyalgia, everyone's heard my story. And so I know what that feels like. So I know I know what I want to feel like. And um, and I love that you're presenting us with this tool and this data and something that I truly haven't offered in the past. So it's very exciting for me to learn this. I love learning it right with my audience. Um, I tell them all the time, it's about continuous learning and I am always learning. Um, so um, there is something that you're gonna be offering, right? A consultation because you're the expert at this, Nurse Andy, not me. <laughs> Well, thank you. Yes, we. I was really excited. So SNP Nutrigenomics is a company I work with, and they are, they are giving a $20 off of testing. So testing is normally about $219. So it's $199 to do your genetic testing. You get about 100 SNPs, which are the single nucleotide polymorphisms, which are the gene pieces that we're looking at, the proteins, how the ladders fit together and make this, but they're really focused on actionable SNPs. I, I don't wanna mess with things that we can't do something about. So you get a discount on your testing and then you get a 45 minute um, consultation with me to just go over them. I've tried to really write the reports so that anyone reading, you get a report, and then there's 10 of the reports that I've done so far on things like inflammation, on cognition, on gut health, on methylation, many things that are key to living a healthy life. These processes, you need to see how they work. So we really tried to focus in on what will help you know where you have to be more concerned or where you have no concerns and look at the patterns within that. So those things will all be available and we're super excited to share it with anyone who may need it. And a lot of times we're always writing blogs and doing things. So we love to just really help people understand 
so that you have that knowledge as power to make the choices for yourself that can give you the best benefit possible. Well, this is a wonderful New Year's gift. So I'm so grateful that SNP has offered to do this. And I'm I'm so, so um, grateful for your knowledge and your education. I'm I'm learning something new here and very interested in learning more. I can't wait to see some of these reports. So I have um, an audience that is not only made up of adults, but also mm -hmm. kids. And I'm yeah. thinking that the genetic reports can be done on the kids as well. We can test on children. I mean, we do make an individualized nutrient, a supplement, um, and that is for children who are 13 or above, but we can test on children as well. We just don't, we don't custom. So part of what we do is we custom compound a supplement based on your genetics. So it's the right milligrams to whatever your mixture is. There's like 400 million different options. So we do not do that on kids under 13, but you can see the genes of them. Okay. And really a lot of the reports are more about what kinds of foods, what kinds of lifestyle activities, how to, how to work with high, you know, all those various. So it's available and we're just working all the time to make different options available for different folks. Well, I'm super grateful for that. You know, I've just watched the health really of our country decline <laughs> over the last 15 years and um, which is a travesty. It really is a travesty. And now I look at the kids and I think, what can we do to help them? They have the cards stacked against them. There's more chemicals in use. There's more processed food. They're being pumped full of food dye and additives and um, anything that we can do um, to give them a fighting chance, I'm all for. So definitely. And, you know, and, and our parents are, you know, it's sad, but it's also really a great time to be going, hey, we need to change this and we can change this. And I just thank you so much for the work that you're doing because it is the kids, you know, and educating them. And you're just doing a beautiful job with that, with your program. And thank you for having us. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Thank you everyone for participating in the Freedom Kitchen event. You know that my goal is to set people free by bringing together the resources and the support network in order to help you do that. So there will be links here to reach out to Nurse Andy if you want to have genetic testing done, if you want to take her up on the offer for the consultation, I would strongly encourage it. And um, I'd love to hear your feedback on this. So thank you everyone for joining us today. And until next time, farewell. Wow.